up every morning and feel gratitude whatever for whatever's going on in my life I think Oprah made a great great suggestion there shout out to Oprah in case you're watching <laughs> <laughs> folks today we have uh, Randolph Carter playing a 1966 Hammond B3 and this is one like the one behind him that we had to take the keyboards out to remove the foam now, uh, you might notice the certified foam-free sticker on this organ. And uh, Randolph, tell us a little bit about, or tell our viewers a little bit about this necessity of removing the foam from the organ. Well, it's a must. It's, I, I look at it as a, just as Mr. Jim referred to it, as a necessity. Because without removing the foam of the keyboards over time, that foam deteriorates and destroys all the wires, if not all, some wires that's associated with the keys on particular drawbars. A lot of fine wires in each keyboard. Oh, yes. In fact, nine, yeah. nine per very fine, almost hair uh, size, right. like a human hair, maybe a little bigger. We'll have to double check on the exact measurements, but it's called Nylee's wire. And as I think we've discussed on several occasions, we've determined that somewhere midway between 1964 is when the factory started substituting this foam for felt. Now, so all the organs with felt, 64 and a half back to 1955, didn't have the foam issue. Correct. But folks, we've taken it upon ourselves once we actually recognized the magnitude of this problem if an organ comes through our shop here at Keyboard Exchange International, we're going to take that foam out. Absolutely. We don't want these instruments in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now having damage from foam if it came through our shop. And we would stress that if you're in the market to buy an organ, don't even think about buying an organ that has the foam in it and it has not yet been removed. It's a huge problem, potentially. And you know, Randolph, if, if an organ has kept, uh, been well kept in an air-conditioned, climate-controlled environment for its entire life, it may not be a problem. Not right then and there. Not right then and there, but the potential is, is if the organ, you know, if somebody leaves the air conditioning off all summer and it gets kind of hot in a house or a church or in a travel trailer or something like that, right. you know, if that's when the real problems Right. And you know, think occur. even along the lines, you know, you might purchase an organ that's in that particular condition, and years from now, you know, uh, when you bought it, it was in great condition, and then change of environment, you know, I bought it from a, a living room. Where they had air conditioning, air conditioning. perfect, yeah. All right, but now, <clears throat> over time, the foam deteriorates. As a matter of fact, something that was interesting, um, I did a repair this morning where one set of keyboards didn't have foam. The top keyboard had foam. That was interesting, and uh, what Randolph has done, uh, along with our cameraman, is created a, a series of videos showing exactly what happens if those wires get damaged. But in this particular case, well, you did have to remove the foam uh, from one of the keyboards. Right. But on the other keyboard, if memory serves, the, at the factory, they didn't attach those two little wires. Exactly. Well, on the on the bottom uh, manual, it was three missing notes. Three missing. Okay. At the top, it was one missing, and so uh, after remo uh, doing the repairs on the bottom manual, 
I realized, oh, okay, well, it's not a foam issue here. It's actually a company de uh, factory defect. A factory defect. Factory factory defect. defect. And when Gary uh, Edinger used to work here for 26 years, our senior tech for, for many years, mm -hmm. Gary, what a, what a fabulous guy, world-class technician and, and great guy, just a great person. Mm -hmm. For those of you who remember him, a uh, wonderful man. But every time he would find a factory defect 50 years after the fact, he'd come into the office all excited, kind of like we did together the other day when you found one of your first factory defects. Okay. We were all excited that we could go back in time and fix a problem that you know they missed at the factory because th these organs are all hand built with a lot of a lot of wiring and you you, you can imagine to get every organ yeah. perfect is it's almost impossible. humanly impossible but when we can find a little defect like that and make it perfect there's a certain amount of satisfaction in our work that that occurs yeah, and I think what that does it displays you know. Um, our protocol, our quality control yeah. protocol. We, we don't want to sell an organ to anybody that we wouldn't want to own ourselves mm -hmm. and, and be thrilled to own and enjoy playing. So right after this video ends, we're going to kind of tag the video of the repair work uh, that Randolph did, but how about giving us a little more of this is the day the Lord has made uh, for our listeners to enjoy. I love that song when you play it. It lifts my spirits, and we hope it'll lift your spirits as well. Mr. Randolph Carter playing This Is the Day the Lord Has Made, often within a mel medley of He Has, he has made, made Me Glad. glad. Take it away, Randolph. <laughs> Hello, I'm Randolph Carter. I'm actually in the workshop of Keyboard Exchange International here in sunny Sanford, Florida. Today I'm going to be doing a repair on the uh, keyboards. Um, we noticed that there were a few missing notes. This is something that comes up uh, every once in a while. Um, but in this case, uh, it was actually a factory defect that we um, discovered here in the showroom after testing the keyboards and the uh, when we we're going to the testing uh, the testing process of uh, the quality control process and what we noticed was that one note was missing on a particular drawbar and we said ah you know we have to break it apart because we want every instrument to be uh, 100 percent if possible and uh, so after getting into the keyboards, I noticed that one wire, this one wire here, was never connected uh, from the factory, which that could have been well over uh, maybe 50 years ago. Uh, but you know, as time go on, we discover these things, uh, you know, here at Keyboard Exchange International.
I had to do in order to expose the wire, I had I used a little sandpaper, just remove some of the insulation right at the tip there. That way, when I go to solder, I can go ahead and put a little solder there and just be ready to go for it. That. On this particular wire, this is the wire that was never connected. What I did, I took a little sandpaper and just kind of um, removed some of the insulation that's on the wire. And the, that yellow coating is that's the insulation. So I'm just going to add a little bit of solder. To do is put some solder at the connection point. Let me see if I can move it this way. solder at the contact point there. Uh -huh. Then I come back. So just an overview of what took place. I stripped the, con the key contact, add a little solder, soldered it, and that's the repair. So this is one of the things that we wanted to uh, basically showing you guys how in debt we get into these instruments just to make sure that they are 100% or, you know, uh, at least in great working condition. So signing off for now. Hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day. God bless.